too many Hoyas for one video. <laughs> starting to really love this wall. I have some photos from a trip I took to Tanzania and then some pictures and my instruments and of course plants. But the star is this corner. So Again, this is kind of an interior corner. Um, that's a north window. That's a grow light, which is necessary for this corner. But look it. Look it. Everybody's doing so well. So we'll start over here. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get in there and really point things out to you or if I should just kind of navigate the camera in there because it's kind of a jungle. So I have a Hoya Australis. This is my larger Australis that I took that cutting from. And as you can see, loves this spot. Back behind the Australis. This is my Hoya Bangongoi. This is one of the like OG original Hoyas that I had received in my collection. Um, soon after, I'm trying to remember what my original one was. I think it was a, public, a Pubicalyx, I think. Or maybe that it might have been the Carnosa Compacta, the regular green one. But this was one that I found um, and ordered soon after that. And it is phenomenal. I kind of feel bad that I have it in this corner, but I appreciate it a lot. It's grown really well and it's definitely enjoying that trellis. So then next to that one, this is the larger mother plant of the Hoya Carnosa Crinkles Tinkles. So that is a cultivar. I believe it is, well, it's Carnosa and something. I don't know what the something is. If you know, let me know. This one I got from Coco Ranch. And next to that one is one of my favorites. This is Hoya Fungii. Another really easy grower. And as you can see, it decided it had something to say. And it grew these giants. <laughs> and it also loves its trellis. A lot of these um, I trellised not too long ago. It's probably been about a month or two now. And I had gotten these bamboo trellises in bulk and with the intention of noticing a lot of my Hoya that were starting to get viney and could probably benefit from that. So I strongly recommend the bamboo trellis. I'll link what I, um, where I ordered from. I think I, I got these off of Amazon. So some of them I got off of Amazon, actually. I think some of them I did get from um, Unsolicited Plant Talks because they sell plant accessories as well. So then we'll just kind of, <laughs> I'm holding on to this one. Let's just go with this one. So this is one of my several varieties of Hoya pubicalyx. I have quite a few. Um, so we saw the red buttons earlier. This one is Royal Hawaiian Purple is how it was billed, but none of the growth is purple, <laughs> none of the new growth. So I'm wondering if either A, it reverted if it does, I don't even know if it does, or B, if it just is the wrong variety, if it's not Royal Hawaiian Purple, or if some, you know, types or versions of that plant just don't have purple growth. I don't know, but I love it anyway. It's really pretty and it's doing really well. It's got that vine happening up top. And leaf here. Oh, all these little new baby leaves coming up. 
cute. Next to that, this one is Hoya, again, Hoya Pubicalix. This variety is pink silver. So probably describing the color of the flowers. So on second thought, I'm gonna have to look into if Royal Hawaiian Purple is in reference to the foliage or if it's in reference to the flower. Cause that would make sense. It'd make a lot of sense actually. But this one I believe is in reference to the flower. Pink silver. It's a nice little plant. Big leaves. Okay. And then I'll come to this one in a second, but this one is again a Hoya Pubicalix. This is my splash variety. And it is pretty darn big. I think we've got four or five actively growing vines on this plant. I love the leaves. So splashy. So pretty. Another really good grower. Okay. The last one on this little wardrobe under the grow light is a hybrid. This is Koya Iris Marie. And I just recently looked up what the cross is, and I'm trying to remember. This is the one where both of the Hoya I was kind of unfamiliar with. Um, so I will put that down below what it's crossed with, uh, what the two, the two cross plants are. But yeah, I love this guy too. It's another very, very hardy grower, very fast. I've heard that this is one of the faster growing Hoyas, not just hybrids. Um, it has these really beautiful matching leaves. It always grows the leaves in pairs here. It's just so cool. The new growth, if you're growing it in the light, in strong light, it kind of comes out this purpley red color and then turns to green. So that is my little trellis corner. And in my north window, I do have, it looks like I have kind of a hodgepodge on this shelf here, but I do have a couple Hoya. So this is my Hoya Retusa. I did move this one over. This used to be sitting on the wardrobe, but it recently decided to freak out and vine out. Oh my God. So I, <laughs> there's just this long vine hanging out right here. Just... And then there's another one out the back here, and then right here, and right here. It's just going nuts. So, it might need its own shelf. And over here, its neighbor is equally excited about growing. And we have these vines on this shepherdii. So I'm not sure if you trellis these guys or if they're happier like hanging, but this one's also known as the string bean Hoya, as you can see why. <laughs> yeah, all three of these little vines are kind of tangling, but they're active growing, like active growers, so it's a new leaf on there. Cute. And then I have very thirsty Hoya Carnosa Rubra or Crimson Princess. The Crimson Queens are known as Hoya Carnosa Tricolors as well. So this is the princess. It has the variegation um, in the middle. So the white part, the green is around the edge of the leaf. With the queen, I'll show you my other queen, um, the variegation, the white is around the margin of the leaf. Okay, fellow plant people, it is a new day. 
And the reason for that <laughs> is because it got to a point in the afternoon where filming in this last room of my house um, became kind of a challenge because of the west-southwest aspect of this window. And we had really strong sunlight coming in um, at the end of the afternoon and I just couldn't get any good footage of these beautiful babies. So thought I would hop on here again and film the remaining Hoyas in my collection. So here we go. So in this room, because it does have the brightest light in my in my house, the brightest naturally produced light, I have a lot of my highlight loving plants in here, um, namely Hoya, but um, I also kind of in the wings where it doesn't get direct light, but it's still quite bright. Um, with some supplemental help, of course, I have pretty much all of my Ripsalis or my jungle cacti are in here. So kind of intermingled. Um, they're both epiphytic plants, so they kind of appreciate the same conditions or similar conditions. So over in this corner, it is fairly bright because I have some supplemental grow lights happening over on these shelves. Um, it does not receive any direct sunlight, um, even though it's in that, you know, southwest aspect. Um, this corner isn't as bright as you think it would be, so I do have supplemental light in here for most of the day. Um, late afternoon, I do turn that off, but mostly Ripsalis, but we do have a few Hoya on this shelf here. Start with this one. This is my Hoya Lacunosa. And this one, kind of a challenge at the outset in that it was kind of stunted and then I realized that it had mealybugs. So once the mealybug situation was dealt with early on, um, this plant has given me zero problems and it has been perpetually growing new leaves. No sign of blooms yet, but that's okay. I am definitely just fine with, with the foliage growth on it. Um, I know this one's generally considered a pretty prolific grower. Mine hasn't, you know, gotten overly large, but it was a pretty small plant to begin with. I think it was like a two, two and a half inch little grow pot that it was in. It was quite small. So, Hoya Lacunosa. Next to that, I had moved my variegated Hoya Wyedii over here. Um, just to kind of give it a boost, it was getting shaded out by some of the other plants on my on my window shelf, um, and I know it appreciates that little extra boost of light, so I have it in a grow light situation, and it's producing a lot of pink, which is cool. It has the, you know, the mottled green and white, off-white leaves, and then the new growth comes in pink. So that is Hoya Wyetii variegata. Pretty cute. Next to that, this one, it's looking pretty thirsty, so I will have to water. I think it, my Hoyas are all kind of overdue for watering here. Um, but this whole top little part on this Hoya Bretonnier is new as of this summer, so that's cool. It also has those darker edges around the leaves because it is growing toward a light source, and it's pretty close to that light source. So this one also, the leaves are, what do they call that? Um, they have like a, a fuzz or a pubescence. I don't know if that's the right word, um, but they are soft to the touch, kind of like velvet or felt. It's a cool one and it dangles. So I have the dangly ones on this shelf primarily. And last over here in the corner is my regular Hoya Wyetii. And this one, like the original vine looks a little sad and it always has looked a little sad, but top, we've got some new growth there. And again, with the darker edges, that indicates some, you know, what it would be considered sun stress. 
Um, it just means that the leaves are growing quite close to a light source. And since they're coming in dark like this, I may consider moving this one just to give it a break. <laughs> there is such a thing as too much light for these guys, but it's hanging in there. Moving on, might as well show you the big hanging basket. I repurposed this um, kitchen, I think it's meant for fruit or onions or produce to hang in a kitchen. Repurposed this, I have no idea where I got it. I think I inherited it from a grandmother, but works perfectly for some of these dangly Hoyas. So up top, you can see I have a Hoya Linearis. And that one goes all the way down, almost to the third rung. This is my second Hoya Linearis. The first one I had gotten um, from a seller in the UK, and it did not enjoy that trip. It <laughs> did not make it. Um, it, it arrived alive, but then it quickly declined and there really wasn't anything I could do to stop it. Once you notice the very top, um, the kind of where the stems go into the soil, once those start to get woody and it kind of spreads along the vine and the leaves start to drop, you know you're in trouble with Linearis. So that's what happened. And this one I got from Plantarina, so it arrived a lot quicker and it was in really good condition um, and so I have it kind of at the top here where it gets more indirect light and it seems to be doing okay I've noticed some new growth on it but that's Linearis and then directly below I have my Hoya Bella and this beautiful plant has, as you can see, it's just finishing up a bloom here. Um, it had two blooms and now it is getting ready to bloom out again on the end here. So it's been a pretty prolific bloomer for me this summer already. And Bella, it's kind of a small one, but um, again, you know, it's taken me a little bit of time to figure out where some of these plants are happiest. Bella was one of those that was kind of, not a challenge, but it took a little while to figure out what it wanted and where it was happiest. So it seems to be really happy right here. And right below is one of my favorite Hoyas in my collection. <laughs> and um, mainly it's because I grew this Hoya from a cutting. This was two single node cuttings unrooted that I had from this plant. And it has since become this beautiful, let me see if I can take it out. I don't wanna disturb it too much, but I definitely wanna give you an idea of what this plant looks like. Yeah, so Hoya polyneura, fishtail Hoya, all that new growth. And I have seen peduncles on it, but with polyneura, I'm not sure how frequently they flower. Not sure, but really love the patterning in the leaves. And I just am thrilled that this was one of those, this was probably the first Hoya that I kind of successfully nursed from cutting stage to full, full grown plant stage. So I'm pretty proud of this one. Let me get it back in its cage. Okay guys, apparently I have too many Hoyas for even a two-parter video series. So coming up is part three. I'm gonna go through all of my Hoyas on this side of the room and there are quite a few. So stay tuned, Hoya Tour part three is coming right up.